Looking at this brilliant decision uh, uh, by West African leaders to take their own security into their hands, and uh, it has been healed by many like, oh, wow, this comes at a time where it is most needed. However, some are like, is this going to be effective? How did you work on this decision by these ECOWAS leaders? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've always said that in Africa, we have very laudable initiatives, very wonderful initiatives to put them in place. And uh, our biggest problem as Africans has never been to develop initiatives or come up with such structures. But our biggest problems have always been into the, in the, in the, uh, with the implementation of such structures. Mm -hmm. Right now, yes, such a body has been, has been put in place. If we listen to the man Turi, he has stated that there is time for them to take over their, their security or to hand over or to take charge of the security in the economic community of West African states. But now the problem is that, yes, as the initiative is laudable, how do they intend to go about it? Is it just because the interests of some people are being uh, maybe threatened, or is it actually because the territorial integrity and the interests of the citizens in general are being threatened? Because this, um, if we are talking about the jihadist movement that is robbing Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, and south of the Gulf, it did not start today. It has started a long time ago, or it did not start just two years ago. What we noticed in this region, in this block some two years ago, was a coup in Mali, was a coup in Guinea, was a coup in Burkina Faso. The question I tend to ask myself is that why is it that before, when the jihadist movement has been taking place in these regions, they did not see a reason for a cons for, for a block force or maybe to, for to, to augment security in the in the region but they just waited now that they are battling with uh, with, with, with coup d'etats they, they are thinking or maybe they think it's time for them to to to, to maybe take charge of their security. So when you want to look at it from that angle, you would tend to think that the problem is not actually to address the, the jihadist uh, threat, which is what is actually posing the biggest security in this region. But now it's to protect the interests of, uh, of uh, those that are democratically elected, irrespective of the fact that they might go against the constitution. Because we have always said that in Africa, the biggest problem we have had is not the coup or is not the removal of a, of an elect uh, a democratically elected leader, but the greatest coups Africans have had has been the coups that democratically elected leaders go against the constitution and they consider that it is the will of the of the people, which is a bigger problem. So, we believe that yes, it is time for Africa. It has always been time for Africa to take charge of their security. It has always been time for Africa to take charge of their affairs, to sit at the end of their affairs. But now, how we go about it, how we intend to manage it, it all, it's of ultimate, ultimate importance because most often than not, we will set better rules, wonderful rules, but when it goes to the level of implementation, it is only aimed at protecting the interests of a selected few, which hide in the disguise of elected leaders. So we hope that what is happening in ECOWAS might turn out to produce results that will put the African uh, continent on the limelight of positivity. Fung. The ECOWAS wanting to take on the security problems of uh, the region. Quite uh, a worry to Mr. Confidence. What about you? Absolutely, as I earlier stated, it is a worry for me because uh, we know, we are aware, we are conscious of the fact that um, the, the the problems in the uh, in ECOWAS did not start two years ago. The, the long started, the jihadist movement have been dead from mm -hmm. time in Moria. We have we have been depending on forces uh, from different countries to come mm -hmm. and then support ECOWAS in fighting these bodies. Mm -hmm. But now ECOWAS was there. What did they do? What now is ECOWAS bringing forth as a justification for them creating a body to handle their security just uh, two years after some some countries have experienced a coup d'etat? Is it, can, can, is it, could there be a possibility that ECOWAS is trying to protect the interests 
or some selected individuals they call democratically elected people. That is the problem. That is what we should be looking on. So we cannot actually ascertain how strong or how effective or how efficient that body can be unless we know their context of operation and how they will operate. Because I've always said, and I'm still saying, that in Africa, the only thing which should be seen as a coup is something that goes against the interests of the people of Africa, not something that seeks to protect the interests of a selected few. Because every day, every moment, every second, we experience political coups that are taking place against our constitution. And these so-called bodies are quiet, they are silent, because they feel that a part of them, people that sit on the same table with them, are maybe protected. They don't want to look into it. So as far as this body is being created to still protect the interests of a few persons, then for me, the body is useless. Yes, we might appreciate it now. We might agree with them that it is loadable. But now, until we get their bone of contention and their uh, their bone of contention and their, uh, their their modus operandi, before we actually have an understanding. Because for me, after having experienced what is going on in Mali, if ECOWAS is sending a body to Mali to go and insist that there's somebody like Asime Goita must return back power to the to to, to to a civilian role meanwhile the people of uh, mali are, are, are appreciating his leadership then i'll think that that body is useless so the body is then maybe to 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 foster or to promote a post-colonial era that mali is fighting to go against so if to say that ECOWAS, according to uh, Aliutori, is trying to take over their defense, they should first of all convince the people of Africa how that their operations will protect the interests of the citizens that constitute that ECOWAS uh, environment. Because till now, I'm not yet convinced that they are trying to protect their, inter their territorial integrity. Because if they were actually trying to protect their in territorial integrity over the years that the jihadists the GRD, have been there, over the years that they have taken a part of some countries like uh, Mali, Niger, the Gulf of Guinea, they could have already created this. Or is it something they just wake up to it today? Absolutely not. So. In as much as we appreciate it, we are taking it with like a pinch of salt because we think that some things might come up that we don't know. And uh, we are in Africa. Anything can come up at any time. It's this same ECOWAS we have noticed that they have struggled to change their currency into the ECO. And then Alassane Ouattara got up one day and said that the ECO was simply going to replace, replace the France CFA. Uh, mindless of what is happening to the CD, to the Naira and other currencies that are, mm -hmm. uh, that, that are being used in that same block. So when ECOWAS is coming up with uh, such a, an, a laudable uh, initiative, they should define to us how it will go. Shall we, should, will they get up one day and say that maybe this body that creating, maybe will go and then maybe form an alliance with the Bakene force to come back and then replace the same Bakene that uh, Mali has sent away? So those mm -hmm. are things they should we should look into them. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of initiative, but we must get how their modus operandi and the co what constitute their, their their mode of operation before we can appreciate it. Okay. Africa Media. The monde, c'est nous.